No players only. Coaches, get out. We don't need you in here. We've been in these meetings before. That's where the good stuff happens. We don't want anybody else. We want the players. Keep it real. Keep it fresh. And that's what we're going to do right now. One of my favorite guys to watch. One of the great leaders of our in our league right now, Nick Felino. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Appreciate you hopping on. Ah, thanks for having me. It's great to talk to you guys. What uh, we were uh, kind of just talking, and we'll get right into it here. But, uh, did we saw? Do you have the Pizzetta, um face again? And the crazy face last night in the penalty box. And then Dano's sitting here, and he's, you know, I've been known for that too. And then we got the split here, I think, of Dano. <laughs> How about Dano's eyes? Nick, you're oh. tough as nails. If you saw Dano like that, what would you do? <laughs> Whoever he's staring at just died in their seat right now. <laughs> that is not, if that's coming at me, I am running the other way. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I don't know about that. Nick. On you too. Yeah, you I, I was really going to say, Nick, there. we're all bald and beautiful and shiny <laughs> now. And I actually had some locks there. Not quite Pizzetta uh -huh. locks. No, but, no, uh, no, and no, and, and by awesome. the way, I was trying to grab. The president of the Toronto Maple Leafs, a young 18-year-old Brendan Shanahan, from doing something crazy in the stands, yet I was going squirrely myself. But uh, we got to we we find out. We got to talk to Shanny at some point and be like, if he just stopped what he's doing, looked back and saw you, he was like, <laughs> all right, bud, I'm not doing nothing. He probably felt really tough. Didn't know that Dano stared at him. <laughs> everybody started, started, scared everybody him started running out of the section, and he's like, I didn't even say anything. And he looks back and sees Dano's eyes popping out of his head. Uh, hey, stuff. but you know who wasn't afraid of Dano? Tell him the story, man. It's cool. The Pops. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Nick. I, uh, I'd had a few scraps. I was young in the National Hockey League in the 80s, and, and I felt I had to move up a ladder. And your dad was a tough guy, and <laughs> Mike. And sure enough, he was with the Sabres, and we uh, banged into the boards, and I dropped the gloves first. And turned out to be pretty even. I, it was pretty, only a few punches thrown, but I'm going, I was pretty pumped that I got through that one because I, I, yeah. was a, I was a guy that watched fights even back then on the VHS, and I knew how tough your dad was. And he was a lefty, I was a lefty. I'm going, I got to grab that left. I got to get in tight quickly. But uh, then he came became the assistant coach of the Devils, and we laughed about it when he, when, when he came yeah. there. But I felt I'm going, yeah, I got that one out of the way. I, I got a, I, I, a ring up the ladder, one of the tougher guys, as I was kind of working my way up, having to scrap a little bit back early in my career to kind of make a name for yourself. That's awesome. He, that's good for his ego. I'll make sure he tunes into this to yeah. hear that one. <laughs> yeah, he was a tough guy. So what was, that, was that just instilled? Like, at what point in your upbringing were you playing the game and you're like, our dad was tough as nails. Like, that's how I want to be. Or is that just how you guys saw the game? Well, you could score goals yeah. too, Nick. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, that's, I, I think, honestly, I actually remember, I mean, he'll be happy I said this, but I do remember him being a little bit more of a, a goal scorer um, than a fighter. But I do remember at the end of his career, that's kind of the role he took on. And, um, I, but I felt like everybody fought in that era, right? Mm -hmm. Like, even the goal scorers fought and you had to. And, um, you know, he instilled that in us. It was always a saying he had in our family. It was like, if, if you're not scoring, you better be passing. If you're not passing, you better be hitting. And if you're not hitting, you better be fighting. If you're not doing anything, get the hell off the ice. So, um, I love it. Yeah, so he's kind of instilled that in us. That uh, is great advice, Nick. I mean, and especially you're right back in that era, you did a little bit of everything, and goal scorers had to fight their own battles a lot of the time. Certainly when when Mike was coming in, and you know he was just a tough guy, and he's instilled that I'm, I'm sure in you and Marcus the competitiveness, which you guys have, what you guys have been all about in your careers yeah i mean i think that's you have to have that to play this game right it's it's a privilege and i think what he mostly instilled in us was just uh we talk about all the time was just the joy and the passion for the game which i think then brings out the competitiveness so we just feel blessed to play this game and to get to go to war with your teammates and and try and build something and try and work towards the ultimate goal of winning and um that was my dad you know he, he taught us how to care for our teammates and uh, and play the game the right way we feel so we're, we're blessed to, to get to do that still and you know, I'm uh, I'm really proud to see Marcus, uh, you know, doing his his part now in, in Minnesota and being such a leader on that club too. And and that's exactly what you were brought into Chicago to be with this squad, right? Like get us going in the right trajectory. We're going to start building some. We got some building blocks here, and, and and it's about creating that right environment. Can you take us through the craziness? It's it's. I mean, let's be honest. It's been kind of a circus for the Chicago Blackhawks this season so far. Every day we're on here, we're talking about Connor Bedard. We all want to see this and that. And you guys are in these big markets, original six markets on the road. It's just like a tour of craziness for you guys. How have you guys been holding up? 
Yeah, it's been good. I mean, I give him such you know, credit for the way he's handled it. It's it's even for me, it's been a little overwhelming to see how much he's had to do already in this you know young career. And, um, you know, you just try to help him through just the game aspect, you know, not even the, the circus that comes with it. And he's he's handled it with class professionalism as an 18 year old. It impresses the heck out of you to see how he's done it and and still been able to be a great teammate and and have the energy he's had to, to push our team. You know, he's still, even when he's not on the score sheet, he's he's producing, he's he's making plays, he's making other guys better. So, um, yeah, we've been paraded around a little bit by Gary these first five games here, it feels like. <laughs> but, uh, but you know what, it's great for our group. I think we've been able to get on the road and get tight and be together, and um, sometimes that can ha really springboard you in the season. Hey, Nick, I, I just grabbed my stick. Uh, it's actually Jacob Slavin's stick. I should probably use, if I want to demo this, I should have gra grabbed a different one. But anyways, I, I did this thing the other day, this breakdown, looking at his release. And in practice, like, is there something that just looks different? I was looking at him the other day, and and he does, like, he does the pull that Austin does. Uh, you know, every, everyone's got that in their bag, but he he does it totally different. But get a shot of my top hand, please. I'm seeing this a lot where we're getting the bow of his stick. But, dude, his top hand is, like, in front of his face, and he's leaning into his stick, and it's bowing, so he pulls it into his feet. I don't know if it's just something I saw in a couple clips, but his release, it's like something I haven't seen before. Yeah, and I played with Austin when he came in at 18. We played at the World Championships together for USA, and I, you know, the way he would shoot it. But it seems like, you know, Connor has figured out a way to, to shoot it from here and here and here and here and here, you know, and it just keeps going down. And It's like and underneath him, right? It's like in his yeah, feet, and he's and able to right. get a good it's, torque. He'll be right over top of him sometimes, and it's impressive. I know it fools our goalies, and, uh, it's going to be a matter of time before it fools a lot of other ones in this league. So he, it's really fun to see how he works at it, though. He's shooting all the time. I mean, it's nonstop, honestly. I was laughing the one day I, I went and we have a shooting room in uh, Chicago and I went to shoot with him and uh, my arm was killing me the next day and he was just ready to shoot again. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got a lot of work to do, I guess, to pull, to stay up with this kid. So <laughs> he's, uh, he's impressive and he, he's just a great kid. He, he wants to get better. You know, he's not satisfied ever. And, you know, he's one of many on our team that are like that. There's another kid, Lucas Reichel, um, our back end with our D as well. So there are a lot of talk gets put on Connor, but uh, we have some really great young kids that are going to be pretty special in this league. Yeah, and the way he's handled the media, and we've talked about the circus it's been for him, especially in today's age with social <laughs> media, everything you, you read, you hear, you see everything, Nick. Uh, Connor Bedard is an 18-year-old. He's handled it as good as anybody uh, I've seen at that age. But behind the scenes, in the room, is he just a fun kid that loves to play? Does he have any quirks what, that you can share with us, or, or is, uh, is 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 it just all hockey, hockey, hockey? Oh no, he he loves hockey. It's hockey, <laughs> hockey. But you know what? He loves being in the room with the guys, and you can tell. Like he just he really does a great job for an 18 year old kid. And I remember walking in the room at 19. You just you know, are you able to really relate? And but he, he you know he likes to laugh at himself. He likes to joke with you. Um, you know he's a big big supporter of the WHL. So we get into some battles about how the OHL is just <laughs> a far, far superior league than the WHL. Hey, um, but you know what? He's a great kid, and he's just a you know he's very you can't touch his stick. You know that's one thing he I've learned, ah, and like that, and which I, I I got close to it one time, knowing that you know you don't touch guys' sticks. I've always known that. And he was like, pulled it away as fast as he could. And I was laughing. So um, he's got his little quirks, but he's, uh, he, he just loves to be in the room with the guys and just try and get better. And it, it's, it's a lot of fun to see. You brought up something that's really interesting to me because um, what I learned when I was in Pittsburgh with, with Crosby and right, like this in Connor's supposed to be one, you know, the next kind of Crosby, if you will. Um, when I went to Pittsburgh, Billy Guerin was there mm -hmm. and they just won the cup in 09. It was that summer. And I came in the room, and Billy was laying into Sid. And I played against Sid. I, I, I knew, obviously, Sidney Crosby. But, you know, he was, he was the face of the league. Sid loved it. Loved it. Because lo you know what? He, he, wanted to be part one, of it. he wanted to be one of the boys. Don't treat me special. Like, he wanted to be one of the boys. He wanted to get razzed. He wanted to be a part of things. Like, if you're going to give it to him, give it to me. And yeah. I think that's why Billy was so good there. And then you learn that about Sid. And, like, don't defer to him on the ice. Don't defer to him in the locker room. He wants to be one of the guys because these guys get treated so differently. They just that, That's their safe space, right, in the room. 100%. That's where they get to feel like everyone else. You know, they, like, I can't imagine what it's like for Connor to go around and, and, you know, everyday public just with the social media now. And 
he, he doesn't even get a chance to be an 18 year old. So in there he gets to be one. Cause we, we remind him every day that he is one. And um, you know, and I think that's good for him. It humbles him, but also it makes him realize that that's how you show love in this league a little bit, right? You, you get teased on and you get to give it back. And, um, <laughs> and that's how bonds are, are created. And that's a beautiful part of being in a locker room. So um, we really, you know, we just appreciate the way he's handled himself and, and will continue to, and he's going to be a huge part of this. And, uh, he knows that, and and I think the more you can make him feel comfortable, I think it's just going to excel him on the ice. Um, we're going to get to a, a fun part here. It's a little game we play, but I'm going to tell the producers, maybe uh, you can have it ready at the end of the interview. If we can have the this jump celebrations of of Dad Mike and, and Nick, uh, those are my favorite. We can end the interview on that after this. But we're going to have, uh, uh, what were you thinking? It's kind of like caption this. We're going to have some pictures of your career and different moments, and we we'll to know what was going through your brain. Oh, God. <laughs> what we got here. Do you, do you remember this moment? Is this like, yeah. I, what, what happened here? That's it. This is going to hurt, I think, when I phone <laughs> them. Um, and also, I probably was like, this better be a penalty or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's usually how it was in front of a New Jersey Devil net. That's for sure. <laughs> right. You got to get in there and, you know, pay a price and get rewarded. You know how that works. You get a lot of goals in those areas. What else do we got? It. What else have we got next? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at the face. Um, I, I don't know if that, that was my That first. might not be it bug was, eyes, but that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty a intense. pretty ferocious face. There. Yeah, yeah. It was a. That was a better. I better not lose this because I'd hear about it from the, all the tough guys in the room that we had. In Ottawa, <laughs> hey, Christmas you guys had a tough Harper. squad. You guys. Yeah. What, what year do you think this was? It might be my rookie year with how bad my teeth were and uh, <laughs> um, until I got knocked out. Uh, yeah, that might be my rookie year. That's a baby 20, face. Hey, 2010, we played you guys in the playoffs this year when I was in Pittsburgh. Okay. Remember, yeah. remember that? That was the the um, Andy Sutton hit on Ju uh, uh, Leopold. Uh, and oh, Jordan Leopold, that remember awful. that one? The penalty box door flew open. That was a vicious yeah, I remember that. Matt Karkner jumped me. I got tuned up by him. You guys had Chris Neal. Chris Neal. Yeah. You guys had a tough I squad. Was, I was back-checking Leo. I ended up playing with him in Columbus, but I was the one back-checking Leo when Sutton came through and just destroyed him, and I remember that. Oh. I, it was one of the... I think Sutton ended up in the penalty box. Yeah, he was. He ended up in the penalty box. It was one of the biggest hits I've ever seen. But yeah, I've been hit like that by Andy Sutton when he was on Atlanta, so I know what it oh. feels like. What else we got here? Another one. Oh, There's a big <laughs> hit. A big hit yeah, right there. Huh? I like that. What's even better is I that was Riley Nash, my teammate in Columbus after. So that was even better. Um, that's nice. I put him in his place. That I, feels good. Hey, Michigan, Nick, I had the exact same scenario. Scott Stevens, I'm in his top 10 hits video. Didn't get hurt, but he sent me ass over tea kettle. Uh, caught me low. I went flying. Then he got traded to it, or not traded, came to us from St. Yeah. Louis, but he did it with Washington. First thing that players and coaches put on was that Scott Stevens hit on me when we came into practice in the room, and I'm going, oh, yeah, I remember. Well, I'm glad he's on my side. I got – I got. that's that's great that you guys – two two big bears coming in, uh, hitting each other there. But I remember uh, – embarrassing one for me, uh, being 6'5". You know who put me in the in the bench? Steven Gianta. No way. Steven Gianta. I was playing for the That's Rangers awesome. against the Devils. Steven Gianta just kind of got me stocky right into the bench. I'm like, I can't live that one down. So that was a tough That's one. Awesome. What else? We got another one here? Uh, Look at that. Yeah. I, love, I love when guys are even more fired up about a goal than the guy who maybe scored it. I love it. I, I don't know. That's uh, I, I just get so fired up for my teammates, and especially the first goal. You always remember that one. Mm. And, to see how happy he was and it's you know a big goal at the time for our club too and um yeah it's nothing better scoring goals in the nhl hardest thing to do so i get excited when anyone scores or myself included so it's uh yeah i'll never stop cheering for for the guys when they score yeah and i and that's why you were and i have been highly sought after for teams taking the next step going for a stanley cup or trying to build a team to go on a Stanley Cup run. So we appreciate you, buddy. Uh, always love catching up with you. Oh, we got one more thing. What do we got? The oh, leap. Yeah. There it yeah. is. There, there it is. is. That first NHL yeah. goal? That reminds that me of Pops. Yeah. <laughs> I should have awesome. got a sponsorship deal with NHL.com and Bell after that with that photo. Yes, here um, it is. Yeah, that was pretty special, man. It was uh, something the guys told me I had to do. I think Danny Heatley was like, you better do it. You better do it. And uh, 
and I was happy I got to make good on it. I think I had a, yeah, I did have a wide open net, and I decided to wrap it around, and luckily it went in. So. Well, it pays um, respect to, to your dad, Mike, right? For sure. Yeah, your that first was goal. the best part. Yeah, he was pretty. Uh, That's cool, pretty man. Appreciative of when I, when he found out I jumped. He actually didn't get to see it. He said in, in real time he was on the bus and Subbury Wolves coaching. So he found he saw it after and was pretty proud. And I think there's a few tears. So I remember play, playing against Mike, and you know some. Up, the opposition would take offense to a guy celebrating. Which I used to love that. I, I, I didn't want to score when I was on the ice, but I used to love the, <laughs> the passion, passion and, right? and when Mike scored, it was it, hey, and it was unique. That's yeah. cool. It's super yeah, cool. And and I don't think if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Marcus did that on his first goal. So we know who the favorite son is now, right? Yeah, yeah. Marcus did that. It was funny on his second goal because he didn't yeah. know he scored his first goal. Because he I, knew. Because he knew. Because he knew where the went powers off his went. Back or something. The first one, he had no idea he scored. So he made <laughs> good, it, but uh, doesn't count. Oh, awesome, yeah, man. Hey, oh, I yeah. have to say this, Nick, because I know we don't have any more questions because we got to get going. Give that Korchinski, I being a defense myself, give him a little love from me. I like his game. I think he's going to oh, be a good one. Unbelievable player. He's going to be special to watch. I will for sure. He's a great kid.